Hello and welcome to the Attorney Post, where we bring you the inside baseball scoop from top legal experts across the country. I'm your host, Justin West. All right. Hey, guys, welcome back to the Attorney Post, where we discuss various facets of the law with lawyers at the top of their game to help you navigate the ins and outs of the various legal fields and jurisdictions. Because, as I always say, if you don't know your rights, you don't have any. I am very pleased today to be joined uh, with Casey. Uh, Casey Eric is a shareholder over at Coles Thompson. And I have to say, this is actually your first time on the Attorney Post. We actually have had two attorneys from the same law firm uh, in a very short period of time. Uh, But I'm really excited to get uh, some more information about what they're doing them at Coles Thompson uh, and just kind of get a different attorney's opinion because even if they work at the same firm, obviously attorneys are always going to be very different. So uh, Casey, how are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Very good. Well, let's, uh, as always, let's jump over and just take a quick look at your website. Uh, my viewers <laughs> will recognize this again from uh, about two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this right. is Coles Thompson. It uh, looks like Cowless, <laughs> Cowless Thompson. But yeah, I learned, like Cowles, yeah, I learned I from said. from uh, from Bill that it's Coles. So yeah. ColesThompson.com. Uh, obviously, the link will be down in the description below. Uh, and here is Casey's page. You can read all about him. Uh, lots of uh, representation matters. Lots of awards and 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 everything else. So we're going to go over all that here in just a few minutes. Uh, before we do that, as always, we're going to jump over and read from our sponsors. And our first sponsor today is PolitiConnect. PolitiConnect is a resource for local candidates to get in front of their ideal constituency. They help target the exact voter or voters that you need to get your message in front of, helping you reach the most popular websites across the country and helping you to connect and stay in front of all of those people, including the 96% of visitors to your own website who never connect and never return. To find out more, visit PolitiConnect.com. That's P-O-L-I-T-I-Connect.com. Uh, Our second sponsor today is Hundreds of Customers Review Pop. Uh, If there was one tiny change you could make to your website that would increase conversions by as much as 270%, what would that be worth to you and your firm or your business? If all of a sudden every single client who filled out your form or called turned into three clients, how would that affect the growth of your law firm or your business over the next 12 to 24 months? The good news is there's an actual solution that can legitimately double or even triple your website conversions. Hundreds of customers, legal review pop utilizes cutting-edge, state-of-the-art technology to live stream your law firm's glowing five-star reviews all over your website, which Spiegel Research shows can boost online conversions by close to 300%. Simply visit hundredsofcustomers.com slash pop and book a 15-minute time slot to see what review pop can do for your law firm or your business, and even try it free for 14 days. That's hundredsofcustomers.com slash pop. And there we go. Well, Casey, how are you doing today? Doing well. Doing well. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you again for uh, for meeting with me. So sure. Casey is, again, a shareholder with Coles Thompson. Uh, his focus is primarily on commercial litigation and employment law. Uh, he represents clients in both litigation and transactional matters that span across commercial law, labor law, employment, real estate, consumer protection, and general litigation including but not limited to breach of contract, corporate trade, secret thefts, uh, tortious interference, defamation, personal injury, fraud, and various kinds of civil litigation. He's represented high-profile clients as well as defended against high-profile national and global entities in matters related to commercial litigation, defamation, privacy negligence, stored communications acts, Texas Harmful Access by Computer Act, Texas Identity Theft Enforcement and Protection Act, and of course, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. He's a member of the State Bar of Texas and the Dallas Bar with admission to the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, the U.S. District courts for the north south east and western districts of texas he's been selected as a thompson reuters uh super lawyer uh he's also in the one percent of attorneys that have been admitted to the million dollar bar association or the million dollar advocates forum uh he is a father he has multiple children and uh seems to be an all-around great guy so uh, question number one that i always ask people casey is what did i miss what did i leave out uh that's just, that's too much probably that that resume stuff uh these websites can get ridiculous about our uh, you know, whatever we do in our career. So, um, but no, uh, I appreciate that. Um, uh, glad to be here. Great to be here. Uh, but, uh, it seems like a, like a, a neat podcast. We can kind of, like you said, kind of get to know the attorney a little bit better. Um, uh, because I think people kind of, especially in the, um, remote wor- working world or the, the zoom age and stuff like that, I think people lose a lot of, um, connection with uh, Mm -hmm. the attorneys and they're like, well, um, uh, they, I think people forget that they're actually people too that actually care, uh, that really do care. And they care about 
uh, how would they, they do their job? Uh, I tell clients, I go, you know, I love winning. I mean, so I don't care what the case is about. Like, I want to win. You know, I want to win. So, uh, you know, regardless of what I'm doing, I have that competitive spirit, that competitive drive. So, um, but yeah, so this is this is a neat thing. So, um, yes, uh, also uh, a father, have two uh, boys, uh, 12 and 8, Henry and Arthur, and they are a blast and uh, they're a lot of fun. And uh, they are also uh, a couple smart, smart Alex like I am. That's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of how I work. I, I kind of have a dry sense of humor and uh, I joke too much. So if, if I left, if, if, if I could say what was left out, I, I, I joke around a lot and uh, a lot of people don't know when I'm joking. So <laughs> if, if, it, if it sounds like or seems like I'm joking on this on this thing today, I am. So um, so there there you go. Not a problem. We we like humor. Casey mm-hmm. also is a is a, a foolish, foolish man who took his children to Disney World, I'm told, a couple of weeks ago in the midst right. of like the craziest season uh, ever <laughs> and experienced all of the madness that is like yeah. I think you said that's like their Super Bowl or their Olympics. It's like like yeah, March. So- <laughs> Yeah, it's like the March is like, uh, I think the mayor of Orlando said during the week we're there, uh, it is like their Olympics. And so what that means is they have buses, shuttle buses going all the time, all hours of the day. You you really don't have to wait more than five minutes to go to either Disney World or Universal Studios, which we did both. Um, but five minutes later, you're on a bus, you're going, uh, they have, they overstaffed the airport with uh, TSA people. And, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to wait, you know, you don't have lines or hours long. It is actually very impressive how well uh, of an operation it is, how well run it is. Um, but, uh, but it's, it's, you know, I think we walked like nine miles a day. I think by Tuesday, I was physically done. And I don't know how I got from Tuesday to Saturday um, for the latter end of the week, but uh, we did it. So you know, you're, you're up at dawn, I'm sorry, you're up before dawn, people are running, you know, to get to be the first in line, to be the first uh, in, in line for the rides, and um, uh, the word of warning is, uh, they are both, Disney World and Universal Studios are very good at getting all of your money, and you can, you'll spend it all, and we kind of have a rule that, because we've been in Disneyland before, that we don't, we really don't look at the amount because I mean we're you know we're cautious but uh, uh, it's it's out of control. I mean you can pay to get in line first, you can pay to get there early, you can pay for all these little things, little uh, additions that um, I mean hell we had a heck we had a, a a watch band that connected to our debit or credit cards, so it got us into our rooms. I could pay for stuff, so I'm kind of running around the the park you know I, I want that let's get that let's get two of those you know so um it, they're just they're geniuses about getting money it, it's incredible absolutely incredible so actually yeah. during the uh, the covid lockdowns one of the biggest money makers for disney is their park and so they were they were chomping at the bit to get the the parks open because that's literally where they make the the lion's share of their revenue uh which really? is fascinating so really every movie they put out is really just an advertisement to get you to come to the theme park and and, and spend all the that. money wow i believe so, it <laughs> yeah so gentle listeners uh if, if you take nothing else away from this particular episode remember don't go in march <laughs> right, right no also if, if you need to take out a second mortgage in order to go to disney world here's a word from our sponsor no, just kidding. right, <laughs> right. Yes. yeah do it do it the disney yes. mortgage corporation that's disney that's mortgage. the next step <laughs> disney disney home loans there yes. you go like, well, Casey, one of the first things I like to ask all of the people who appear on my podcast is just to kind of give us a, a pitch for yourself. Um, tell our listeners, who is your ideal client or set of yeah. clients? What are your, your ideal types of cases that you work with? And, and, you know, give us the range of everything you do. Yeah, so um, the range is if the big umbrella is commercial litigation, which is a kind of a big subject, uh, a, lot of, a lot of different kinds of categories. Um, and employment. So those are the two main areas. Um, I think my most enjoyable clients are um, medium, small, medium business owners, medium-sized business owners. Um, and sorry, guys, if I sound like I have allergies today, I do. Uh, 
but um you, you and me both again i, yeah, I was saying oh, this to casey in the beforehand i woke up and i i couldn't talk at all so oh, I, we're I've both doing, a little under the weather today yeah i've been doing nose spray like uh <laughs> like it's it's you know nothing um no worries. So the most enjoyable would be uh, kind of the small to medium business size uh, owners because I I really do, especially if it's kind of early on, for example, um, have a, a client who is, uh, I mean, just this week we met and he's going into a business with another person and it's, it should be very exciting. It looks like it has a lot of potential. Um, and, uh, and so I like being part of the beginning of that and to really help them along. So what, what I do a lot of, for example, in like the employment arena is uh, advising clients with employee problems. So before litigate, I mean, I, everything I do is, is basically litigation. So it's all lawsuit somehow. But um, I do a lot of, or a fair amount of work with uh, clients um, beforehand. So uh, responding to like discrimination, harassment claims, or uh, trade secret theft is uh, a big deal. So um, I do a lot of cases where right away we're we're asking for a temporary restraining order to prevent you know the theft of things and, and uh, theft of like corporate confidential information. You know I've I've had I've had a case where uh, we literally had the email chain from the former employee who was emailing it to his new employee email address so he was literally sending schematics to his mm. new email address at, at his at this company that he had yet to start at so uh crazy stuff like that but the the most ideal i think what i would characterize as the most enjoyable client is is someone uh, in, in that range or companies in that range uh it's a lot of it's mainly defense work i i do if i do plaintiff's work it's typically on the commercial litigation side um, for example, uh, commercial litigation employment, like for example, the TROs I mentioned, that's, that's a lawsuit. So you gotta get to move very quickly. Um, and then, uh, you know, anything, uh, most, most of the plans work would be, uh, commercial stuff, business A versus business B, you know, breach of contracts, uh, you know, um, things like that, you know, typically the higher, higher dollar amounts. So. So that's, um, that's mostly what I do. So, uh, but uh, the ideal client is one that is uh, um, practical, you know, reasonable. And um, you don't uh, like the unreasonable clients. Yeah, I know they're tough. They're hard. They're hard. Um, <laughs> it's not that, yeah, make things a little difficult, but, um, you know, good or bad. Uh, I, you know, I think, I think a client, especially in lawsuits, I think any client, business, individual, whatever. I think you've got to go into it looking at it kind of like a like a sport, uh, like a sporting event where you're gonna have you're gonna score touchdowns, you're gonna, you're gonna have fumbles, you know, you're gonna get called off sides, you're gonna go forty yards, you know, in, in a in a play, you'll you know you'll get three first downs in a row, and then maybe you get you know uh, a sack or something, quarterback and sack. I know that's that's kind of a, a cheesy analogy, but I think you got to go into it like that, where uh, you're 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 playing for the entire game, you know, not just one you know little victory or one even one little loss. So yeah, because uh, you're gonna have that, you're gonna have that, uh, and you're gonna have uh, a lot of cases where you start off with a lawsuit that has a lot of different kind of claims, you know, um, breach of contract, fraud, whatever, and you'll have you know, I'm sure you've talked about this motions for summary judgment. Those are pretrial motions to get rid of claims or the entire case. And you may lose some of those, you know, you may not have the evidence to get there and the court will strike, you know, uh, dismiss some of those claims, but you're, the lawsuit's still going on and you're still going forward under the main, for the main reason that you, you sued in the first place. So, um, that's, that's probably what I would, uh, uh, tell anybody going into a lawsuit. It's not, um, a, a lot of people, uh, you know, I have a lot of clients that say, hey, listen, I've been in business for so many years, and 50 years, whatever, and I know, you know, how it goes. And I always have to remind them, I go, listen, in a business deal, both sides want it to work. You know, that's not what a lawsuit is. You know, both sides want to win and, you know, the other side wants to defeat you. And obviously you want to beat them. 
Uh, but it, people that have, use an analogy from the business world, I'm like, well, that, you know, those are deals. People want it to work. And so they're trying to make it work. Lawsuits don't do that, you know? So uh, that's probably the main tip. Uh, look at it as, as, you know, you want to win the war, not just the battles. And um, that uh, it's not like a business deal, you know? Yeah. I mean, the other side's always trying to, you know, pick away at you. So. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a war. There's always some attrition. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's another, that's a good analogy. There's always some attrition and, um, but that's expected. So um, you, you can't, you know, hang, hang it all on, you know, one motion or something like that, you know, so. Um, and also uh, if you're not prepared, I don't, I don't like losing, as I said, I like winning, but um, uh, if sometimes it doesn't go your way and, yeah. you know, despite how much you believe in it, despite how much, you know, evidence you have and how hard everyone works, these decisions are made by human beings and they're called judges or if you get to a trial, they're made by juries and they may make a decision that makes no sense. It makes sense to them. It makes no sense to you. And that is the risk. So, um, so there, that's, that's a long way way of, of probably setting up the, the mindset I want someone to have. No, that's totally fine. That's a, uh, it gives us a little <clears throat> peek inside the, the inner workings of your mind. Right. Um, speaking of ideal clients, if Disney came to you tomorrow and said, represent us and we'll give you a free admission to the park and, yes, <laughs> and give I'll you, do it. The- <laughs> do you finish the sentence? Yeah, done. done. I'm in, I'm, I'm in. in, sign me I'm up. Done, whatever it is, what do you want? Yeah, agreed. So, well, let me ask you this then. <laughs> what got you into law? I know some, some kids grow up and they just know I want to be a lawyer. It's one of those, those things, you know, there's a handful of things that, you know, you say, when I grow up, I want to be X and a lawyer right. or a doctor, those of them, I wanted to be a cartoonist, you know, you pick yeah. practical things or, or non-practical things. Were you one of those kids that just knew you wanted to be an attorney growing up or I, did you kind of fumble into this? What, what got you going into law? For some reason, I knew I was going to go into law <clears throat> before I like when, when I first went to college, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I, uh, I told him, hey, the plan is to go to law school. So let's, you know, like my academic advisor, I said, hey, um, uh, what, what do I have to do to get to that point? You know, and so let's pick a major. You know, I had an idea, but I, you don't know anything when you graduate high school. You know, certainly you don't know how to plan your academic career, I think. And uh, so I, do, I went to that. And so that was the plan. I don't honestly have a specific reason i just kind of knew i liked it I, th- I thought i would like it um <clears throat> it's it's not what i thought it was uh and that that in both good and bad ways um and i think a lot of young attorneys have to i know i, I sound old now young <laughs> these young attorneys younger attorneys uh, <laughs> you don't know how good you had it uh that um <clears throat> i had to walk you, uphill both ways to I, I did. I did, right i know yeah, we didn't even have chairs or something like that. But um, uh, but um, I think you learn that uh, you may have a passion for going to law school, and a lot of people I hear they're like, "Well, I want to do. I'm going to be a civil rights attorney." And I'm like, "All right, uh, I want. I want to do. Um, uh, you know, a lot of pro bono work." I'm like, "Well, no, you don't, uh, because you realize it is a business, and at the end of the day, you're running a business and." Uh, I don't care if you're in a firm or, or a solo practitioner, uh, you are running a business. Otherwise, don't do it. You know, what, what's the point of, of doing anything if you're not going to make money to, you know, take care of things, pay for, you know, uh, you know, provide for your family, go on Disney trips if you can, you know, stuff like that. I mean, you know, don't do it for free. So, um, but anyway, I just kind of do. For some reason, but I don't. Uh, I don't. You didn't have any family. My parents are attorneys. Uh, I don't have any close immediate family members that are attorneys. Um, uh, I think I may be the only one out of everyone in my, you know, on both my parents' sides. So, so yeah, yeah. How'd you get into business law itself? Like, was that just a incidentally got hired and it just worked out that way, mm-hmm. or was that as you were in the process of learning, you're like, you know, I kind of click with this, or or what led you into the facets of yeah. law that you really focus on, and did that That's shift? Right. right. So, <clears throat> um, I think employment and business kind of go hand in hand um, because you're you're you know, especially for pre pre litigation stuff, you're giving um, 
essentially business advice, you know, hey, uh, how should we pay our employees? Should we do, should we, should they be independent contractors or W-2 employees? Uh, what kind of policy should we have? Um, so it, it overlaps. And so I think it was a, I think it's a progression. I think it's a natural kind of segueing into that um, because they, they do overlap. You're essentially getting business advice. You know, how do we protect our trade secrets? How do we, how do we make sure this stuff is safe and uh, can't be emailed, you know, to our competitor, um, you know, stuff like that. So I think it's, I think it's just a natural companion to employment law. I, I, I intentionally got into employment law because I just enjoyed it. Uh, and then I think as time went on, I think business is like I said, uh, just a, uh, necessary part of it. So. Oh, there you go. I actually was talking to an attorney the other day. I have not had him on the podcast yet. He's in Chicago and I think he's like one of the, the foremost experts in circus law. And I was just like, I don't know how you hey. fall into a niche like that, but he's, he's known for it now. Like it's just yeah. his thing. So, you know, sure. sometimes, you, sometimes you fall into things and sometimes something just calls out to you. I, you'll have a case and you're like, wait, you know, I really love this, this area of it. And I bet he's busy, busier than ever, because I'm sure it involves a lot of business stuff, you know, yeah. circus corporations. Uh, if they even have circuses anymore, I guess they do. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they do. <laughs> I guess so. They're lawyers. Um, and, um, but no, they're attorneys that specialize in internet, um, like uh, your internet perception or uh, internet law, meaning you know, dealing with business defamation or how to, you know, deal with bad reviews or, you know, uh, defamatory, you know, stuff like that. They just focus on your kind of like your online reputation stuff. Yeah. And because it's, it's a whole, I mean, the law has become so specialized that it's, it's, it's probably a, not a, a kind of a misnomer to say that you do general practice. Um, I mean, there's still general practice attorneys, and they are, uh, <clears throat> um, they are, uh, you know, probably your small town attorneys. They do basic stuff, wills, yeah. things like that. Um, <clears throat> but everything else, uh, at a when you kind of go up a couple levels, uh, everything specialized. I mean, employment law. You could have wage and hour law experts. You'll have uh, ERISA, you know, retirement experts, type of thing. Yeah. Experts. Um, so. Um, so yeah, uh, there, there's all kind of special specialties. Gotcha. Yeah, no, hundred percent. So here's a question I'm hoping that eventually just becomes deprecated and doesn't make sense to ask anymore, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask it now because I think sure. it still is a, a timely topic. We are still in the process of coming out of the, the, the pandemic that affected right. everyone for, for two years. Some of us more than others, some of us less than others. Uh, I live in a tiny town, as my listeners know, about uh, seven square miles and, and about 12,000 people. So it really wasn't too big of a deal here. Yeah. Um, but of course, I know I've talked to attorneys in New York City, in California, where everything just totally shut down. I know you're down in Texas. So I'm curious. Uh, I've <clears> talked <throat> to a number of attorneys down in Texas. Yeah. Did uh, did the pandemic affect you at all personally, either, either your, in, a, in a personal way or in a, in a right. business way? And also, what are some of the challenges your clients <clears throat> have, have faced dealing with both the pandemic and in the height of the pandemic and also coming sure. out of the, the pandemic and in, in the follow up? Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so sorry, we're in Dallas. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're in Dallas and um, I think immediately, right away, the pandemic affected everyone the same. We were told to go home. You know, we had to go to our house. We had to lock down. Uh, <clears throat> and that's where we were for a couple months. Personally, um, it was a very, uh, it was a very interesting time. I mean, I think we were all tested, you know, on a, on a personal level. <clears throat> I know a lot of marriages were tested and didn't, did not succeed because they were on lockdown. Um, but I remember the first day and I was, you know, and everyone, it's not so long ago that people still aren't talking about it. But I remember going home and like, we're on a Zoom meeting today. I didn't have Zoom on my phone or on my computer. I knew yeah. what it was, but I never had to use it. And about 30 minutes later, <clears throat> we're having meetings on Zoom. I mean, it was that fast because when you're, when you're afraid, when, you know, fear is a great motivator, and when you're afraid of the future and what may happen to your job and firm and everything else, you uh, you figure things out very quickly. And so uh, I, I figured it out. We all did. And we were on our way. Uh, Business-wise, 
Um, we actually uh, had a really good year uh, in 2020 uh, and into 2021. Um, <clears throat> uh, we even, you know, personally, and I think for a while, we had our, uh, just numbers wise, uh, we had a, a good year. So I think the professional services were not affected as much uh, as other services, uh, you know, like dentistry, maybe, or you know, certainly healthcare. But um, yeah. we were able to move on. The courts adjusted quickly. Um, and, you know, what's interesting now is that, uh, uh, you know, as soon as I could get back to the office, I did. And I was usually the only one here. Uh, that was like in June 2020. Because um, a lot of people were uh, working from home, obviously. <clears throat> and, um, but, you know, a couple of years later, you know, just at two years later, uh, you know, we still have, uh, like, usually our office is about 50%. We don't require staff to be here every single day yet. Uh, you know, they, they alternate. So you, you get to go every other day. You have Tuesday and Thursday one week, and then Monday, Wednesday, Friday the next week. But um, so we're still letting people do that. If you want to work from home, you can still do that. And I think people are completely fine working at home. I mean, if someone's not doing their job, you'll know. I mean, it's obvious. It, you, I've learned that it is obvious. And I think we lost one person because of that. They were just not able to be <clears throat> productive at home. But, um, uh, but honestly, I think I work at home. Uh, when I'm at home, I work great. And because, you know, especially in the beginning, we were all bunkered in to our house. And so my wife's over there, my two boys are, are on iPads or laptop, they're going to school. And so I was in another room and, you know, when, when it's just a computer in front of you uh, and you have to work, you just have one screen in front of you. <clears throat> I work, uh, I think almost, <laughs> it was better. It's kind of crazy because here I have all these screens. Like that, you know, yeah. Yeah, I have a, you know, I can listen to music or whatever. And, uh, but I have like, <laughs> you can't see it, but like three screens here. So I'm always like jumping between things. I work on three monitors too. So right, totally exactly. Yeah. Cause yeah, I mean, and heck, uh, I, that I may get another, <laughs> another one because it just seems like you can, you can't uh, have too many. But um, in that case, get three more, put them on top. And then you got three more. Them. Yeah. I'm going to get three more here. It's going to look like, <laughs> NASA, it's going to look like a control center here. Uh, of course, the next stop is just virtual reality goggles. So everything right. is just, right. you know, just it's probably it's, cheaper than using a screen too. <laughs> see me here. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. <laughs> we all. No, we all I appreciate the, uh, the, the thing about the pandemic and my, my listeners have heard me say this before, but yeah. I'll say it again is I, I used to run this podcast and before the pandemic, I had to talk people through what is Zoom? Like, oh, this is a Chinese company. Is this safe here? To use? Should I put this on my thing? Do I have to install this and whatnot? And right. all of a sudden, with the with the rise of the pandemic, I, I kind of rebooted the podcast because now attorneys know how to Zoom. <laughs> Everyone yeah. knows how to Zoom. It's just it's it's very very second nature. Um, so finding finding the uh, the silver linings in in uh, in in the the pandemic, I guess, uh, yeah. it definitely made what I do a lot easier. And, and yeah. I mean. It, it doesn't replace in-person communications. I've talked to a number of attorneys. I'd love your opinion on, on where Zoom has a role in like the litigation process. I've heard some attorneys say they love Zoom hearings. Um, right. It just allows them to like, you know, to, to literally Zoom through them and not worry about it. It expands the reach of their clients or, or, or the clients they can take on. But I, I imagine the idea of something like a like a Zoom trial would be just terrible because it's hard to read the room. You can't make eye contact with, you know, right. a juror. When the when the other side says something, you're like, that's not true. You can't just look over and, and catch the eye of the of the judge or the, or the juror or, or, right. or whoever it happens to be. So I'd love your thoughts on on where sure. you think Zoom will play in 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 the future of what you do. Yeah. So Zoom is like I said, I think it's here to stay. Um, <clears throat> you know, routine hearings, for example, to like an agreed motion to continue the trial date. Uh, you know, before and we're right next to the courthouse downtown. Hmm. And but even then, you have you a good view, by the way. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Everyone says it. Uh, I'm lucky. It's a uh, it's nice office. I don't I don't deserve it, but I got it. So, um, but uh, <clears throat> even to go to a hearing across the street, you know, you got to go down there and you got to wait on other hearings. You know, so you could be down there for a really long time waiting on other people to be done, and you're just sitting there. Um, whereas a Zoom hearing, judges, you know, uh, you know, they'll you start if the hearing's at eleven, you're starting at eleven, and you're done by eleven. 
10, you know, whatever. And you're in and out and I don't have to get up. I don't have to take all my you know junk down there and stuff like that. Even, even for like routine things. So a lot of courts uh, and a few here in Dallas, <clears throat> um, I know at least one, but they're keeping Zoom hearings for like routine motions for like Fridays. So like Friday will be the Zoom docket, you know? And so yeah. they just click through all these, you know, prove up hearings, meaning you just kind of prove up something, a final settlement agreement, whatever. But uh, it, basically uncontested hearings and uh, you can just zip through them really quick. Um, I think Zoom uh, is, uh, I think we're still going to have it. Um, I think jury trials, I don't think it's practical. Uh, I've had uh, a couple bench trials. Those are trials before the judge and uh, arbitrations. So since, so we've had trials, but it was in front of just the judge. So that's a little bit easier because everyone knows what you're saying and you know, yeah. you're not trying. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> so uh, it's more perfunctory. <laughs> per yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, the judge doesn't need to be wild or entertained. He's listening or she's listening and uh, it, it's pretty straightforward, but, but jury trials, I've not had to do that. Um, and uh, a lot of those trials have gotten continued and uh, we're still now kind of, uh, uh, you know, going through the, the trial docket. I think a lot of people are because things just kept getting kicked kicked down the road. So um, I think I think it's a good idea for arbitration. You just have an arbitrator or a bench trial, you just have a judge. Um, but jury trials, I don't I don't think you can do it. I mean, and not to get psychological on everyone, but uh, I've heard that uh, most, the majority of the way we communicate is nonverbal. And mm -hmm. it's not, you know, I think it's an overwhelming majority is nonverbal. And you, you know, tell them, I'm talking with my hands here, how to do that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I'll just do that. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so, uh, and which doesn't surprise me. So a lot of the stuff that you get, um, you know, it may be hard to, to read someone, like you said, read the room. Um, I think, I think in-person meetings are still good for, if you can meet the client uh, yeah. at the very beginning, if they're local, I always have them come in because, you know, it's just, it's hard to make a connection. Um, mm -hmm. It's not impossible, not impossible, but it's just, uh, it's different and, um, you know, but you can't, so. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, there's a company that made, um, it's a brilliant idea because I actually had this idea and I didn't ever act on it because I just thought it was impractical. But when you're yeah. trying to simulate you know, eye contact, yeah. On my screen, I put I, I make the zoom window tiny, like this big, and I drag it oh. to the top so it's right below my uh, my camera. So it looks like I'm making oh. eye contact with you, and I can kind of see you, but really I'm staring into my into the camera, and that's what oh. simulates the the eye contact. But apparently, yeah. there's a company that makes a makes a a webcam that hangs down in like it's a little circle that just sits in the middle of your screen, so you, you kind of have to work around it. But when yeah. you're staring, because it's really easy to stare either at yourself or or to look no, at the other person. Yeah, I'm sure I'm but, looking at when you're looking at the screen, person. Yeah. It looks like yeah. you're you're distracted. Distracted. I used to actually put the window over here, so I wouldn't even be tempted to look at it. But then, like, I feel, you know, I feel like I didn't ever make a human connection. So, uh, so for those of you listening, I highly recommend make your zoom window tiny and drag yeah. it to the top, right underneath your uh, <laughs> your that thing. Is a great idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you one of the office set. That's good. There you go. That's you know smart. that I, I, I'll send you, I'll send you a, a, an invoice for the. Uh, for right. The yeah. Do it. Yeah. We'll pay right away. No problem. We'll pay online. You know. All right. I, I like that. Do, yeah. do you pay in trips to Disney, by the way? Yes, I do. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would take it. You know, uh, <laughs> it was anyway. I'm just warning people. Um, save up for it. Uh, you know, be smart. My my, my wife gets all the credit. She is a a master scheduler, and so because we were staying at like a Disney World hotel, Universal Studios hotel, uh, we got early admission, so you get like an hour head start on the rest of the world and <clears throat> you know they have light uh it's called lightning lane now so you yeah pay, yeah i mean you can pay to be I actually uh, when i was like 25 years ago i had a friend whose dad was an attorney and took him to to he was an only child like i was and he took him yeah. to disney and like hey we need a friend for a friend you want to come so that was my trip to disney and they had the lightning pass whatever they called it back then yeah. i was like yeah. this is the coolest thing ever so oh, this great. this podcast incidentally is not at all sponsored by the disney corporation right. <laughs> right. let's throw that out there it's but true. however yeah. if you're listening disney uh, and you want to send some money my way if you want to yeah we can talk we can talk no i'm not gonna say no i'm not gonna say no but if you want to it's up to you totally up to you uh i have a business attorney who can represent me too i'm so a we'll business sure attorney we can we'll have a deal today we'll have a zoom meeting 
today. There you go. I was in yeah. We'll do uh, it. All right. So let me let, let's switch feet here a little bit. And I'm going to yeah. I, I like to ask questions that are a little bit self effacing, self deprecating um, only because I think you can really get to know somebody by by understanding what they've what they've struggled through. So one of my favorite questions to ask everybody who appears on the podcast is is to learn about your biggest failure in in the process of of practicing law. And of course I always ask this and my 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 listeners know that I only view it as a failure if you don't learn anything from it. If you if you just fail and then you walk away and and nothing good comes from it then obviously yeah that's a failure. But if you learn from it it's really just a slow burn win. So so Casey can you tell our listeners about sometime in the practice of law, whether it was early on or just last week, when you failed. And I mean, it, it probably hurt a little bit, but that's what did you learn? From and, and how do you <laughs> how do you carry that forward to helping your, your clients now? Uh, so uh, I think, number one, <clears throat> you need, you're going to have successes and failures. I've had them. And uh, that is part of the practice. It's part of podcasting or whatever you do. You're going to have you're going to have losses, especially in, in litigation where there's a winner and there's a loser, you know, uh, and you can, you know, use whatever euphemism that you want. But in the end, it, either you, if you don't settle it, uh, there's going to be a winner and the jury's going to pick one or the other. The judge is going to pick one or the other. And there it is. So you better be OK with doing that. Um, I think it, it, the case that I think of uh, automatically, it was a long time ago. And I was a second chair, which means that it, I was assisting a partner on this case. We went to trial. It was like we were two weeks into it. And <clears throat> um, the, the details aren't as important as the, as the lesson. But um, I think the lesson was uh, if you, uh, you know, don't, you know, uh, there's an expression, I forgot it, but basically that um, either accept the status quo or act. Right. And so mm -hmm. if uh, th there was a thing that we should have filed this simple motion requesting uh, it, it was uh, a designation of, of additional experts in a case and we should have done it and indecision kind of, you know, decision paralysis, I think, is a bad thing. And there would have been really no harm in filing a motion and just seeing what the judge said. And the lesson is you've, you've got to act. And, and uh, I'm not saying just run in haphazardly or ill-advisedly, but, you know, um, you need to act. Do something about it. Uh, don't, don't pretend just because it may be an uncomfortable conversation or a hearing or whatever. Uh, don't let that, you know, make you just be still and not do it. So I, I think that the best lesson is uh, you need to act. So do something about, it, you know, um, you know, make the request. Let's say you're, you know, you were late on something or whatever, or, or you thought it was okay, but you weren't sure. Just do it, you know, get it in front of, get it in front of the judge, get it in front of the other attorneys, uh, you know, and make a decision. Um, don't just sit there. So the lesson is, um, you, you need to act, you need to act. Uh, don't just sit there just because it's, you know, a lot of people avoid things because uh, it's uncomfortable, you know, or they, they don't want to be embarrassed, you know, or uh, tell the client that, uh, you know, maybe they made a mistake. You, you can't do that because it will lead to even worse results. So that, that was the big lesson. That's fair. That's a good, yeah. it's a good lesson in life. And, you know, yeah. you either, and I, I like the way you phrase it. It's a good slogan. You either accept the status quo or you work to change it. And yeah. you know, sometimes, sometimes you work to change it. It doesn't change, but at least you tried. Right. You know, I, I think that was a, the Wayne Gretzky. You, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Right. Right. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we one. do that at home a lot. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Especially when like we're, when we're playing basketball out back, you know, like, you know, <laughs> it's like, if, uh, especially about younger, uh, when they're younger, yeah. Boys are younger, like, you know, I'm like, well, I can't do that. I was like, well, you, you miss. And I think I use that exact quote. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And uh, that's a, I mean, there's a infinite number of analogies and cliche, you know, cliches that cover that, but that's really it. So, um, yeah. and I think that applies to anything. I think that applies to anything, you know, uh, personal relationships, business, professional, lawsuit world, whatever, um, do something about it. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so 
let's put the shoe on the other foot. Can yeah. you tell the listeners about maybe one of the cases you're most proud of? Uh, something that's kind of the feather in your cap, something that maybe you're known for, or people are just like, wow, I can't believe you you pulled out that win, or just you know one that w- where you, the the client was in a rough spot, and when they were done with the case and everything, the judgments or whatnot, they were just in in a totally different place personally financially business wise emotionally whatever it happens to be sure. what's 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 the case that's the feather in your cap absolutely uh so i won't i won't say who but i'll say i represented a family member not immediate family but <clears throat> um they uh they were severely injured and this was back when i really did personal injury stuff and uh i took the case on and uh it was the the entire case you know it, it wasn't perfect but um it was my a plus effort every day every time because i'm like i can't screw this up i'm not gonna i'm not gonna because i gotta live with this you know I, yeah it's family they're they're not going away you know um and so it uh we settled it's what got the uh million dollar advocate thing deal so um it that is my i mean i just mean everything i did uh and, and you know we all try to do this every day don't get me wrong but especially that case, I was at my best. I did everything. I didn't wait on things. I acted if I needed to do something. I, you know, um, I went forward with it. So that would be my best because the, uh, at the, at the end, you know, we, we, there's a settlement case, but we got to the, uh, a really large settlement because of all the things I did. And, uh, that is the case. Like I went, I remember when we settled, I just went home and I think I slept for a couple of days because it was just <laughs> like, I am emotionally exhausted, you know, and uh, it costs a lot of money and invest, uh, you know, tens of thousands of dollars into it for experts. And so it was just the, the risk level was just going up and up. So uh, that is my favorite. One. And uh, 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 I wish I could do that every day. Or I try to, I think, but um, that's the one. There you go. And then you were interviewed and they said, yeah, case Eric, you, you just won this, this case. What are you doing now? And you said, I'm go, going go to, to, we're going to Disney World. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, Disney, they call you. Call you. I don't yeah. normally keep coming back to a theme, but for whatever reason, that's just where my head is. It's, today. it's a, it's a crit. There's no, there's no other place like it. And obviously we were just there and uh, uh, it is the happiest place on earth. I mean, I remember telling my family go, it's, it's kind of sad, but I remember, I was like, uh, I've never been this happy for this long, a period of time, or you know, uh, it was like I've been happy on your feet, right, right, right on my feet. Oh God, Thank God, that was a, uh, that's insane. I mean, you're just you're going all the time, so you better get ready, save up your money, and get on a treadmill before you go, because you will, you'll be dying. Uh, Sponsor that I should have because I actually use them is, uh, is a company called Rebel Desk. I actually have a standing desk and a, it's oh. a treadmill on my desk. So I actually oh, tried nice. once to, just, so if you see me bobbing around, it's because I'm standing. Uh, but I, try, I tried doing an interview once while using it. It just was not going to happen. But uh, yeah. when I'm, yeah. I'm not not Zooming with people, I usually right. have it on and I'm kind of doing my thing. And, That's you know, it keeps the phone. So, so maybe I'm, I'm primed and ready for yeah. that. Yeah, that. You'll, you can handle it. Yeah. <laughs> that great. Disney effort. So, yeah. Right. Uh, so here's a random question, though. If, yeah. if you can go back, you've learned a lot in your practice of law. If you can go back sure. and find young Casey, fresh out of out of graduate school uh, yeah. or, or, or uh, law school, rather, and yeah. you can give him some advice other than, hey, trust me, buy Bitcoin, <laughs> hold right. it until right. it hits at least 40, right. 50,000. Get some um, Zoom stock, yeah. you know, buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Just Other than that, um, yeah. if you could give yourself a piece of advice as you were starting out uh, in, in your professional law, and of course, by extension, you know, any new attorneys who are listening to this podcast who are getting started in law, what advice yeah. would you give yourself, Casey? Uh, <clears throat> you know, don't, uh, and, I'm, and I, I pride myself, I guess, on being very pragmatic, but uh, don't be too naive and, you know, be prepared that this is about a business. And if I could give anyone any, any like specific advice, <clears throat> even when you're starting out on your own, and I've and I've said this to uh, the young associates, uh, so because I'm the old, old old attorney now, but uh, but I've said that always know, and I think this is true in any business, but especially in law, you are working for yourself. Uh, you may be an associate and the first year and doing the the not fun stuff and all that, but always know that you are in the end you are working for yourself because uh if you do that 
um, you'll, you know, you'll get the clients, they will come find you, uh, you know, so it's okay to right away, you know, put yourself out there, meaning, uh, you know, put out articles if you'd like, or, um, <clears throat> uh, um, you know, you can, uh, uh, you're, you're always working for yourself. So, you know, promote yourself, go on LinkedIn, go on Twitter, you know, always be thinking about how can I further my personal career? How can I get, you know, the clients? Because uh, eventually you're going to be expected to do that. And yeah. you don't want to start 10 years into it. You know, you want to be, you know, just kind of priming the pumps, I guess, to, uh, to do that. So uh, if you, if you do that, I think you'll be successful, but uh, that's probably the, that's advice I, I give people now. And uh, that's how you, I mean, you should think, you should think that you are a, an entre entrepreneur and uh, not just uh, a cog in the wheel of the company. Yeah, no, that's great advice. I've always been of the mindset. I teach this to my children. You should be an entrepreneur, even if you're working for somebody else, you should right, always exactly. be an entrepreneur. Exactly. Because uh, at the end of the day, you are the one who has the most control over your future, what you do, uh, right. et cetera. I mean, it's why I went into business for myself as well. And, right. uh, you know, I, I think that I think we're missing in our culture these days, this this concept of entrepreneurship. You know, right. even even two or three hundred years ago, everyone, in a sense, was an entrepreneur, but your your, your business was just farming. You know, but right. you didn't right. work, you didn't eat and you worked hard and you ate better. You know, you had right. more food, you know, barring, you know, random, you know, blights and, and droughts and stuff like that. Yeah. Everyone was invested in what they did, whereas right. and now it's very easy to just go punch a time card and, and you know, you're cog in a machine and you view yeah. yourself that way. And I, I'm firmly, firmly a believer that everyone should, even if you're a cog in a machine, even if you have a job where you feel like you can't advance, be the best you can be. And if you have to hustle on the side, hundred percent. Right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, uh, because uh, if you do that, um, I, if you do that, you're going to be in control over your career and, and, and thereby your personal life, your family, and you're going to set yourself up to get, to have options. Um, because if you're doing a bang, bang up business and you're, doing, you're pulling in uh, revenue, whatever, or, or working hard, you're going to be able to make choices like go into business for yourself if you want. You know, I, I had my own, I had a partner, I uh, had my own firm for about five years and uh, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, there were a lot of pluses, there are uh, a few minuses, but, uh, um, but you've got to be able to do that. And, and you know, I agree. I think a lot of people go into jobs now and uh, it's, they're looking at like, what's in it for me? What do I get from this? And you just, you've got to understand that you've got to put the time in and, uh, you know, don't focus on the immediate gain, focus on, um, you know, the uh, kind of overall picture. Like uh, I tell, you know, the, with Coles and Thompson, it's a very, it's a great place to work at. It's very collegial. Uh, if I needed help, I'll, I can call one of them, you know, my partners. They will literally drop what they're doing and help. Uh, it's a fun place to work, which is very important to me at this point in my career than it was maybe in the very beginning. And I think I, I tell people like, hey, you know, you got to uh, you got to look at it that way. But you're always like you said, you're always working for yourself. You, you, if you do that, uh, you'll be in a position to make you know, to have options rather than be beholden to someone that gives you work. And, yeah. you know, if you're doing that, then, um, then you don't have options. You don't have the ability to say, I don't want to be here anymore. Or, you know, uh, I can't leave. Then you can't leave, you know, uh, and you could be at a bad firm, bad job that you really cannot afford to leave, you know, and you're going to be miserable. So, you know, set yourself up for success, if you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you one other question here and then mm -hmm. we'll jump over, take some sponsors, come back and I'll ask you a final question because you've right. been very, very generous with your time, but I know you probably have a few other things to get done today. <laughs> um, but I think one of the most important questions I, I like to ask is just simply this. It's very, very common on a website to have an FAQ section of frequently asked questions because clients come to you guys and have lots of questions, but sure. a lot of websites don't have an SAQ or a should ask questions. Ooh. Um, 
are there are there any things that you wish clients would ask you um, or would think about or or look at when it comes to hiring a, a firm, particularly a firm that yeah. does the things that you guys do? Like, what what are the questions they should ask, and and what would the answer be that you would give them? I know that's kind of a very well, open end, but it, that's a good. It's a good question, and I think one of them would be if I call, do I get you directly? You know, I think that would be it, and I think that's why I like working with small to medium sized businesses and uh, people have my direct line when they call, I pick up the phone. Nobody else does. Uh, if they email me, I respond, you know, not some, you know, in, in rare cases, if it's like a routine, you know, Hey, when, when is that hearing set, whatever, you know, uh, my legal assistant can do it. But I think one of the should ask questions is if I call you, will I get you right away? Will, will I, will I get you directly or someone else? Does somebody else answer the phone? Um, <clears throat> I think that'd be one of them. Uh, should another, so that'd be the first one. I think another should ask would be, um, well, I don't know. I think that that's my only good idea, I think. Uh, the other ones would be, uh, you know, um, uh, maybe kind of back to my same point, like what, what should I expect? Or is it, you know, uh, especially in lawsuits, is, am I going to, you know, uh, is there going to be, you know, kind of downturn, down points, I guess, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, like, you know, what, what can I, here's, what can I realistically expect in a lawsuit? And, yeah. and then, you know, be open to the answer. And I'll probably give, I would probably give the same speech I just did. And that is, uh, it's going to be ups, downs, and you're, you're, looking to win the war, not just a single battle. So, um, and then maybe, uh, well, I don't know, one should ask questions is how long does it actually take to do something? And, and so- The answer is always longer than you think. <laughs> longer than you think. And I, um, uh, you know, when, when clients are, uh, you know, I'll tell people, and, I, and I'm, I'm really bad at doing this. What I'll do is I'll say, uh, okay, I'll get that turnaround by tomorrow. I always do that because you know I want to. You want to please people, um, <clears throat> but uh, clients, especially in this day and age with instant communication, instant email, text messaging, phone calls, uh, but especially with email, you should expect that it take. I mean, it takes a lot of time to draft anything, especially anything that's important like something you file in a lawsuit or like the, the petition or in federal courts called a complaint, that's the initial lawsuit. Anything that's that important because there are severe consequences if you leave something out, uh, it takes a while. And it, look, don't be surprised if it's a week from now that we get this out because that, you know, I don't have a lot of downtime where I'm sitting here drafting. I, I had a client go, um, <clears throat> uh, I had a client say, well, you know, it, it takes less than a minute to reply to an email. And I said, well, first of all, that's not true uh, at all. Uh, the usual distraction time for an email is, is 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, I think if you're working on like a, a brief or something like that and you get interrupted, it takes you, I think, 45 minutes to get back to where you're going. And, and I said, it's kind of the same thing. I said, anything that's important enough for me to respond to you and, if, you know, you know, uh, he or she, I would say, but they ask like five, six really substantive questions. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, and I said, I told, I told them that if I responded to every email um, right away, I would get nothing done. I would spend my whole day, my entire day, my entire life, simply responding to people that to say, I got your email or I hear you or whatever. You know, yeah. just know that I got it and that I'm working on it. And, uh, uh, and so, but I, and I, even in the email, my response, I said, this email alone took 45 minutes yeah. to, to respond to you because you're, you're asking like, you know, what, what's the strategy? What's going to happen next? What do you think our chances are? What about this? And it's like, these are not, you know, simple yes or no questions. So Anyway, uh, I think that's kind of what I tell, we tell people. Um, it takes a long time, uh, yeah. longer than you want to think. And, and I think people would say that if they're on 
my side of that conversation where e even look, I, I send an email sometimes and I catch myself going, what's taking so long? <laughs> and then I can remind myself, Casey, look, it takes a lot of time and they're not just sitting there waiting for your email. Yeah. You know, if they were just sitting there waiting for my email, okay, fine. But even then it's going to take a little bit of time. But uh, anyway, um, you know, it's not unusual to maybe respond the next, within 24 hours or something like that. So um, that makes sense. There. Yeah, that's yeah. my half complaint, <laughs> I guess, advice. That's all right. I mean, again, that, that helps frame things for people so that they have a realistic understanding of what they're getting into, right. what they should be expecting. I think it's, I think it's a very fair answer. So, yeah. um, well, here in a minute, I'm going to ask you the fun question. Uh, this is my magic pen. I mentioned this Great. in the pre-roll. All of my listeners already know it's an ink joy. I'm not sponsored by paper mate either. I just really like their pens. Uh, however, paper mate, if you're out there, please you're feel listening. free to if stop you're listening. Right. <laughs> uh, or send me on an all expense paces trip to, right. to Disney World, you know, whatever. Yeah, paper um, made, send me to Disney World, and then yeah, we'll promote. But you. this particular pin is magical uh, yeah. because with this pin you can go in and you can strike a law from the books or or make a change to the law or add a law that's not there at all. Right. And so the idea is is there could be a big sweeping law that has ramifications for everyone outside of Texas. It could be a, a tiny little stupid law that makes you fill out form and and triplicate. So in a minute yeah. I'm going to ask you what you would yeah. change um a big little or or what it would be and, and how you think that would play out before we do that though i'm going to jump back over as always and uh, take one more look at your site again it's coles thompson uh link in the description below there'll also be a link to all of our sponsors in the description below as well uh and our next sponsor we have two sponsors here uh the first one is groove funnels which i'm a big fan of if you love spending $5,000 on a new website and you love paying monthly hosting bills of $79, $89, $99 a month uh, for a platform that simply allows you to sell a product to your potential clients or, or customers, then by all means, keep doing whatever it is that you're doing. But if you're like me, you hate that stuff. And that's why I personally recommend Groove Pages. Groove Pages is the all-in-one funnel website sales platform from internet marketing legend Mike Philsaim. Visit theattorneypost.com slash Groove to sign up for a free account and build a complete site at no cost, really at no cost. There's no cost and it allows you to build up to three fully functioning websites at theattorneypost.com slash groove. Uh, they have a huge list of apps for the platform that basically turn into a webinar platform, an affiliate platform, or almost anything you can imagine. It's kind of the Swiss army knife of uh, internet marketing and the base account is totally free obviously they have upsells and, and things you can add on to, to make it more powerful but it replaces everything from kajabi to kartra to shopify and, and and all stops in between click funnels as well highly recommended very very cool and uh, definitely worth your time visit the attorneypost.com slash groove and then our other sponsor is hundreds of customers rocket seo are you a business owner and you know that being on page one of Google is important, but you're afraid to work with a search engine optimization company or SEO company because you know SEO is expensive and slow? Well, it doesn't have to be. Not anymore. Rocket SEO from hundreds of customers forces you to page one of Google safely and legally through the power of the news media. Rocket SEO utilizes national news media campaigns across the gamut of news sites that simply rank instantly. With Rocket SEO, you can boost your website's ranking in Google in one week or less with a simple system that leverages the power of major media companies, news sites, and affiliates of ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, as well as local news sources from the Boston Herald to the Sacramento Bee and all stops in between across the entire United States and even internationally to put you on page one of Google in under a week, oftentimes two or three times on page one for dozens of different keywords. To learn more, visit hundredsofcustomers.com slash rocket. That's hundreds of customers dot com slash rocket all right so casey yep. magic pen time magic i give pen. you the pen you can make a change can be big can be little okay. somewhere in between could be something that affects your clients could be something that affects the whole world could be something that just affects again the stupid form you have to fill out and triplicate three times a week right what are you going to change so uh the one thing i would change would either get rid of arbitration required arbitra a mandatory arbitration uh, or somehow re revamp it um, because it, I'm sure everyone has heard the word arbitration. Uh, that is, and I even mentioned having uh, arbitration uh, trials. Um, <clears throat> that's a contractually agreed private lawsuit, you know? And so uh, the problem is it is very expensive, especially for ind uh, individuals. 
but like a filing fee, depending on how large the case is. And what I mean is the amount of damages that you're seeking. So if, you know, if you're, you know, in a uh, construction case or a real big commercial case and you're suing a company or whatever for over, you know, $300,000 or half a million, uh, the filing fee can be $10,000 just mm -hmm. to start. And so uh, it, it has become cost prohibitive. And um, I, I, I think the thing I would strike is that um, it, it is automatically enforced. Courts very much favor arbitration. It un, you know, helps unclog the public court docket, uh, federal and state court, but they you know, if you have the word arbitration in your contract, in, in an agreement or on the back of a ticket, you know, uh, uh, whatever, um, you have to go to arbitration and it's extremely expensive. And uh, <clears throat> the the original design for it, I don't think it was well served anymore. It's meant to be faster. Uh, it's supposed to be more efficient. It's supposed to be cost effective, but it's none of those things. And I've had arbitrations take much longer than I would have if I were in federal or state court, you know, it's like in Texas, a lot of federal courts, you'll, you'll get a trial setting like within a year. I mean, you'll, you'll be, so that's, that is not bad. Uh, sometimes less if you have a certain kind of case, state court, it could be a little bit longer, it could be less. So, but uh, it, it just, you know, and an arbitrator <clears throat> is, it's like a private judge. So both parties have to pay for the arbitrator. So if you ever have a hearing, you've got to pay the arbitrator for the, their time. So just imagine a judge, but you've got to pay them by the hour and it could be a $500 an hour deal or $600, you know, expensive thing just to have a simple motion, you know, hurt like, hey, we're going to agree to move this deadline. You know, I mean, that could be 1200 bucks, you know, just, you know, so it, uh, that's what I would change. I would uh, either get rid of it or um, make the requirements to enforce it a little bit harder uh, on, on the person that wants to go to arbitration maybe make make it more conspicuous language like so in some contracts you have to have you know uh, contract language in bold you know all caps bold print 12 point font whatever those are real you know requirements and you know some disclaimers you know if someone wants to disclaim a warranty whatever you have to literally if for it to be enforceable uh you have to have it in all caps set apart you know, it can't be hidden somewhere. I think mm -hmm. arbitration clauses should be just like that, where it is obvious, you know, you are going to arbitration if you enter the contract. And then uh, uh, only then, you know, I, I would I would do something like that to make it a bit more, more difficult because it's just, it's too, too damn expensive. Too damn expensive and takes just as long, so. That's an interesting, uh, interesting change. And honestly, I don't think anyone's ever actually suggested that change before. So I always like hearing something new and, yes. and understanding the, the logic behind it. So that's really yep. good. Um, well, Casey, I appreciate you spending time with us today. We've had a long conversation. And again, I know you have other things to get done. I do always like to give my guests the last word, though. Are there any parting words of wisdom or thoughts that you'd like to share with uh, with our listeners? Uh, so here's, here's what I tell the boys. Um, uh, it doesn't matter what happens. It's what you do next. And uh, so <clears throat> um, how would I make that kind of uh, connect with law, I guess, um, kind of back on the advice, uh, you know, um, you know, make sure, you know, don't get into decision paralysis. Um, but uh, uh, another thing I would probably say is uh, you, your, your attorney, whoever they are, you've got you to be able to connect with, you got to be comfortable with. I'm not saying you have to be all warm and fuzzy or whatever, but um, understand that he or she does want to win, you know, and whatever, how you, however you define what a win is in a case, mm -hmm. they want to win. And um, they all do because it's just kind of human nature. So um, you've got to not be adversarial to your attorney, certainly to the other side, right? Because that's part of the, the process, but um don't go into it because I think a lot of people are very standoffish. Uh, they don't like attorneys. We have bad reputations or too much, too many movies and TV shows that make us look terrible, but, um, and jokes and jokes. Right. Yeah. Right. We got, we're very proud of those actually. So do you, do you have a favorite attorney joke? Oh yeah. But I don't, I don't know if I can do a pack podcast, but, uh, okay. <laughs> but maybe I'll fly. Well, yeah. Uh, that's the first one. But, um, uh, 
but just know that that um, the the better you work together, I promise you, you're going to be more successful and you're going to go farther. Uh, don't you know? Don't be standoff as adversarial with your own attorney. And if you need to make a change, uh, then do it. You know, you can, you don't you're not married to it, right? Uh, and even then, if you're married, you can get, you can make a change. It's called divorce. But uh, in law in, with lawyers, you can hire a different one or whatever, make a change. But uh, just work together. Just work together. It'll it'll not only make you more successful. It will save you so much money because you're not having someone that is trying to defend themselves all the time. You know, and like try to ju- try to justify. You know, or 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 answer questions that really aren't you know, pertinent to the, to the problem, but, um, they, uh, um, you know, you're working together, you're, you're, you're spending all that time and money on moving forward, not in combating each other. So that's probably what I would tell you. That's good advice. Yeah. Well, Casey, thank you very much for taking time thank to you. talk with me today and, and sharing your wisdom with our listeners. Uh, as always, this has been The Attorney Post. I am your host, Justin West. I've been chatting with Casey Eric over at Coles Thompson. As always, you'll have a link to their website down below in the uh, in the box below. That's ColesThompson.com. Uh, you can also give them a call at 214-672-2000. As always, this podcast, though we do feature attorneys and we do talk about legal issues, does not constitute legal advice. Uh, and if you do have a legal issue, you should always seek the advice of a competent attorney in your area who focuses on the matters that you need help with. Obviously, if you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area or even just in the state of Texas, you've got a business question, I highly recommend reaching out to the people at Coles Thompson. They seem to be very on the level. Again, I've interviewed a couple of uh, attorneys there now and and uh, had great conversations with both, as you listeners have probably heard. Um, so please feel free to reach out to them as well. Uh, if you were listening to this podcast on YouTube, we would always appreciate a like and a subscribe and a, and a share. Obviously, we are across the uh, podcast spectrum as well. So if you're listening to this on YouTube, Amazon, uh, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, Apple, whatever it happens to be, like, subscribe, share, rate, review, whatever it happens to be, we always appreciate that as well. And until next time, I am your host, Justin West, reminding you, if you don't know your right, you don't have any. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.